In the previous episode, I, Christian Hansen, visited the village of Bali Dharmakirti located in Sriminanti village, Ayarhitam, West Lampung. I studied how the community of Bali Dharmakirti worships their god, living in harmony with their local wisdom, in the richness of music and dance. In this episode, I will reveal in depth how the community of Bali Dharmakirti sustains their lives as coffee farmers, from coffee beans to a cup of black coffee. I'm Christian Hansen, and this is Indonesia Journey. Located in Bali Dharmakirti village, Sriminanti, Airitam, West Lampung. The community here embraces the philosophy of Tri Murti. That's why there is a Tri Murti statue at the entrance of this village. The morning sunlight penetrates into Ibuwayan Mustika's kitchen. The aroma of coffee fills the air amidst the rising smoke and the flame in the stove adds warmth to this morning. roasting bean ya untuk berapa menit? 30 menit saja. Oh, okay. Sampai uh, on Jadi hitam ya. Sampai hitam, nggak terlalu hitam. Masih ada kelihatan coklat-coklat dikit. Kalau mm-hmm. nanti kalau hitam, dia kalau disetuh seduh itu ngambang. Rasanya udah ampa. Kalau masih agak kuning-kuning gitu kan dia enak. Ngendap itu nggak nggak ngambang. Rasanya juga udah nggak enak lagi. Oke. Okay. Dan setelah roasting, apa lagi? Biasanya sih ditumbu. Make lumpang itu lalu diayak, hmm. udah diayak, udah selesai kita tinggal di nyeduh, hmm. tinggal dicoba rasanya okay. enak apa enggak? Oke. Okay. Enggak tahu juga rasanya nanti. Jadi nanti kita kita bisa coba ya. Iya. After the coffee beans have been roasted and cooled, it's time for Ibuwayan Mustika to grind the coffee beans using a pestle and mortar. She does it patiently. The coffee beans are pounded until they become fine according to the desired consistency. Hard work, yeah. It's just traditional way. Traditional. Yeah. Yeah. You can smell the coffee. Nanti ngopi bersama ya. Nanti ngopi ya bu. Nanti. Ayo sini, Asen. Ambil itu. Ayo An sini. Ikut ngaya sini. Belajar ngaya. Nah, ini bu. Ya, sini sini. Nah, duduk sini. Gimana? Ini. Aha. Aha. Oh, segini. Ah, okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Ya, jadi. Okay, okay. Dan setelah proses ini, siap untuk minum? Siap untuk diseduh. Mantap. Yuk, satu lagi. Nah, okay. The next step, after the coffee has been ground to the desired consistency, the coffee is strained using a conventional strainer. This is done to separate the coarse coffee and to prevent the coffee powder 
from clumping when brewed. Okay, bro. Lanjut ya. Oh, ini kerja keras. My leg so tired. Kesemutan, you know? <laughs> yeah, sami, sami, bro. Not only using a conventional strainer, the coarse coffee can also be ground using a coffee grinding machine to avoid wasting any coffee. During the process, the remaining coarse coffee beans can be directly placed into the grinding machine. Good coffee will always find its admirers. Coffee never chooses who deserves to enjoy it. Because in front of coffee, we are all the same, a human being. Next, on Indonesia Journey, I will harvest coffee in the field and show how coffee beans are being picked and transformed into green beans. Coming up next on Indonesia Journey. Ali Dermakirti has a main crop of coffee beans that becomes the main source of income for the West Lampung community. With a supportive climate, Lampung coffee belongs to the category of Robusta coffee produced by the plant Canapea canopera that thrives at a temperature of 24 to 30 degrees Celsius and at an altitude of 100 to 800 meters above sea level which makes it possess a strong coffee character. Om swastiastu om. Swastiastu. Eh, tapi kenapa ambil daun juga, Pak? Supaya biar nutrisi fokus di bahan untuk berbuah yang akan datang dan enggak menyerap yang akan produksi. Supaya hasilnya bisa sempurna, bisa bagus. Penuh, bisa Aha. bagus, bulat. Aha. Nah, ini yang dibuang. Aha. Ini tunas-tunas cacing. Yang saya buang tadi itu tunas air, ini tunas tunas cacing dan tidak produksi bagus. Oh, ya produ itu. produksinya bagus ini yang tunas tunas raja seperti ini untuk oh. persiapan tahun yang akan datang. Jadi bapak ke ladang setiap hari untuk ambil kopi atau? Tidak, kalau tidak. mengambil kopi pas pada saat musim panen. Hmm. Itu kisaran dari bulan. Mei, Juni, Juli, dan Agustus. Oh, oke, okay, oke. Okay. Jadi, gimana Bapak belajar tentang kopi? Dari nah, dari orang tua dari atau? Dari orang tua, kita Aha. belajarnya otodidak aja. Otodidak? Iya, dapat warisan dari orang tua, kita ya memang dari kecil terakhir di tengah keluarga petani. Hmm, jadi sudah berapa tahun Bapak kerjaan petani? Saya sudah turun temurun dari Bapak bahkan saya dari lahir sampai sekarang saya udah di tengah hamparan kebun kopi. Jadi Pak dari menanam sampai panen, panen berapa bulan atau berapa oh, minggu? Biasanya kalau kopi di robusta dia dari penanaman kita udah tanam polybag ya polybag itu bisa satu dua dan di tahun ketiga kita udah panen. Oke. Okay. Iya. Tiga okay. tahun kita udah udah panen. Oh, oke. Okay, okay. Di robusta. Hmm. Oh, jadi ini robusta atau? Robusta, ini robusta. Ada arabica juga? Arabica belum belum ada kita di daerah Lampung Barat masih kita masih akan mencoba untuk kedepannya masih hmm. nyemai. Hmm. Kita masih persiapan di pembibitan untuk arabicanya. Oke. Okay. Masih kita fokus di robusta. Fokus di robusta ya. Ya. Favorit saya robusta juga. Robusta. Iya. Jangkau dia. Ya, tapi uh, rasanya arabica lebih 
harum ya? Uh, iya, buah juga, tapi menurut saya robusta sedikit lebih keras, lebih baik iya. juga. Iya. Terima kasih, Master. Iya, sami-sami. Ayo, lanjut. Iya, yeah, lanjut. Although known for its bitter taste, it does not mean that Lampung Robusta coffee is inferior to Arabica or Liberica coffee. In fact, Lampung Robusta coffee is very popular in the market due to high demand. Lampung Robusta coffee has even become the province with the largest export value in Indonesia. With coffee exports from Lampung reaching up to 400 million US dollars or about 6 trillion rupiah in 2021. As an economic driver, coffee beans become one of the sources of income for the Bali Dermakirti village residents. However, sometimes during the process of harvesting coffee beans from the trees, the coffee beans have turned black due to the delayed harvesting or caused by pest attacks. <laughs> Ini kurang bagus. Kena penyakit ini dimakan ulat. Oh ya? Sama kena apa jamur. So they use fertilizer or? No. Ya di sini pakai pupuk pupuk kimia. Pupuk kimia ya? Organiknya campur lah organik sedikit. Tapi pupuk mahal kan? Mahal sekarang. Iya. Mahal. Tapi ya habis bagaimana petani kan? Harus mupuk, kalau nggak mupuk, nggak mau yeah. buahnya kurang. Iya, yeah, betul. Hmm. betul, betul, betul. Yeah. Mupuknya dua kali setahun. Dua kali setahun, ya. After finishing harvesting coffee, we bring the harvested coffee beans and pack them in sacks to take them back to Pak Putu's house for drying. During the coffee drying process, there are two types of drying methods. The first one is natural drying, where the coffee beans are dried until the coffee cherry skin is dry and separates itself from the beans without coffee soaking or immersion. Tapi kisarannya satu sampai dua bulan. Oh, okay. Kalau panas terik bisa tiga minggu. Tapi i, biasanya sebulan lebih. Oke. Okay. Proses natural ini. Oke. Okay. Tapi di cita rasa lebih bagus. Nah, lebih bagus ya? Lebih bagus, lebih mantap. Karena natural. Oh, iya. The first method is natural wash. The second method is honey process. This process involves removing the outer skin of the coffee bean with a machine or a pulper, but allowing the sticky mucilage to remain attached to the bean during the process of drying. This provides a distinctive sweetness to the coffee beans. In the process of sun drying, the Dharmakirti community usually uses the patio drying technique. With this method, the coffee beans are spread out on large patios or concrete surfaces to dry under the sun for a week or 10 days. They are regularly raked and turned to ensure even drying, whereas Petek Palangi coffee and Petek Mera coffee will be dried separately. Petik Pelangi coffee refers to the coffee that is harvested by mixing red, yellow, and a bit of green coffee beans, which are separated from the Petik Mera coffee beans. 
In terms of taste, Petek Palangi coffee can imply a diverse range of flavors or a unique blend. On the other hand, Petek Mera coffee refers to the coffee beans that are picked when they have reached a red color, indicating that the beans are fully ripe. Fully ripe coffee beans tend to have a more developed and complex flavor profile. They can exhibit characteristics such as sweetness, balanced acidity, full body, and potentially fruity or floral notes. The color difference between Petik Pelangi and Petik Mera during the drying process is that Petik Pelangi will turn dark blackish, while Petik Mera will have a brownish color. Riding a motorcycle along a rough road, I'm heading towards an untouched waterfall. We'll be right back, still in Indonesia journey. This afternoon, while I was strolling down in Bali Dermakerti village, suddenly I met an elderly grandmother who was fragile and old. She was sitting in front of her house, enjoying the last days of her life. Sembilan tujuh. Sembilan tujuh. Wah, saya dua sembilan. Saya gadis, duit bodongan, uang uang zaman zaman Jepang. The sky of Bali Dermakirti is filled with stars tonight and shortly after, the sun emerges amidst the green of Bugit Barisan. Early in the morning, the residents of Bali Dermakirti and I head towards the waterfall that's inside the Bugit Barisan National Park. Using motorcycles, the locals and I traverse the rough dirt roads. This motorcycle journey takes 20 minutes. It takes effort to maintain balance and avoid falling on the motorcycle. And finally, we arrive at the Bukit Barisan National Park. To reach the waterfall, we have to walk through thick undergrowth, passing wet and muddy paths, and avoiding obstructing branches. After walking for 15 minutes, we finally reach the Air Abang waterfall. This waterfall is untouched and rarely visited by locals. This 15 meter high waterfall is a water source used by the residents of Bali Dermakirti village. It's hard to believe that I've spent two nights in Bali Dermakirti village. With my visit to the Air Abang waterfalls, it signals that it's time for me to go back home. I've gained so many experiences from living with the people of Bali Dharmakirti. They have taught me the importance of maintaining the connection between humans, God and nature. Bali Dharmakirti has taught me to embrace the values of Gotong Royong and preserve local wisdom. That maintaining the relationships between humans and nature and between humans and God is absolutely essential to be done. 
Bali Dharma Kirti Village is a showcase of how the community upholds its cultural wisdom. Where the earth stands, the sky is held. <laughs> Together with the people of Lampung, the residents of Bali Dharmakirti village lives in harmony. <laughs> 